preparing to live stream the meeting. And we'll make sure that we're doing that and that's all fine. And then I will come out and we will get started. There we go. So we are now live, we're in our Zoom room and we're live on the Facebook group. Very exciting. And I'm so happy to welcome the beautiful, magnificent Kate Wolf, who I have been working with for over a year now. Say hi to I'm Diane Lisa as well. We're here with us in the Zoom room and hello to um, all of you who are there on our Facebook group in the Hearth Space. Um, I started work with Kate Oh, well, I'll tell you what happened, actually. I met Kate, and I think it was two years ago, and I met her, and um, she was talking about her work, and I just felt in my body, I'm going to work with this person. Just, I just know it. And I, and I know that a lot of people who are in this community will have that experience as well, that you just go, you just, your soul is drawn to it, and your body just goes, yes, and you don't really know why, you know? And it wasn't the case where it wasn't beautiful and wonderful. It was just that I was doing so many other things. And I was like, oh, but I don't have the headspace. But I just trusted. I was like, it's going to come. It will come. You know, divine timing will come. And it, and so it did. And she popped back up at exactly the right time for me. And I went and I did her, um, your story school I started with. And, and I did your, your year-long program, Nesmoise, which was amazing. And, and I'm so happy to welcome you to this community for two reasons. And one is because... I know that there are many people in my group who, like me, are looking to bring their work out into the world. And it is so soulful, you know, spirit led work where they want to make a real difference and they can feel all of the things that sort of aren't quite right in our planet right now. And they want to make that difference. But there are also people who are empathic, sensitive, you know feel so much and it's really really difficult and I know that this is your zone of expertise and speciality is helping and so for those people I know that your work's going to be really really valuable for us to talk about and share but there's another aspect to why I love working with you Kate which you don't know about because we haven't actually had this conversation that was a surprise for you just as much as um as, as everybody else so one of the pieces that I that I teach for people who've been on a, awakening or on a Drazzle's path, we look at soul law, we look at Northern European soul law, and the way that our ancestors used to conceptualize the soul. And it was so much more um, complex and nuanced than today. You know, we sort of say this is the soul. You know, and everyone goes, we get it, we understand what the soul is, and we don't really talk about it that much more. We just go, the soul. And when I first learned, learned about sort of the way that our ancestors looked at, at themselves and, and felt about themselves and the, the, just the time that they spent clearly, you know, in, the, in, the lit in all of the literature and the books talking about the soul and the different parts. And so I'm just going to talk about three aspects of, of the Northern European soul that I have felt have really, I've really connected so much more deeply with them through my work with you, Kate. One is the, uh, the like which is your physical body. The word likeness comes from like. And our ancestors believed that our bodies were our strongest connection to spirit, that that was where we got um, our truest, most um, credible information from, from spirit. And the work that you do to help us to deepen into our bodies and feel what they are saying to us and the time that is taken in honouring that is so important, I think, for us to be able to you know, show up fully embodied and to express ourselves in the world. The second piece is called the Arthem. It's also called the Ond and the Eldor. It's all these fabulous words because um, it was being used in Germany and Scandinavia and in the Anglo-Saxon and everything. So they all had slightly different words, but it meant the same thing. Very connected with the god Odin. And it meant the breath of life that helps us to manifest our dreams. Yeah. And your work is to me that. You know, that's what we're doing. We're finding what you refer to as the wild voice, the wild voice that comes from that deep embodied place and comes up and we are able to express it. And through that expression, we're able to manifest our dreams. 
And again, you know, I knew all about that from the room perspective. I know all about chanting the runes and doing all of that work, but bringing my own words, modern English words and doing the same thing was, was something that I needed to get, I, I needed to become comfortable with and so you supported in, in that. And when we do that and we go right down into our heart spaces, we connect in with um, what was referred to. This is a slightly more, there's less, um, what's the word that I'm using? It's a slightly more modern term, but I think that it makes sense for us in a modern context, what they call the Valkyria, connected with the Valkyrie, that Diane, we were talking about the Valkyrie on Monday, weren't we, in Middle Earth readings? The eternal essence of the self that travels through all lifetimes. You know, when the rest of us is shaping and changing and forming in response to whatever is happening, wherever we are, whatever world we are in, that essence stays with us and you know, flies with us through life. And I do believe that that, you know, it's very difficult sometimes for us to connect with that part of ourselves because we're being bombarded with stuff all of the time. So I wanted to give that little bit of context to the, that, that there was a dual value for me in yeah. working with you. So, so thank you for that. Because I, I know we haven't discussed that before, so I just wanted to say thank you. And I'm not going to speak as much now because I've done a lot of speaking, but I wanted to give um, uh, people that that sense of you know, why, I, why it is that I talk about you quite so much in, in my groups and in middle of readings and all sorts. And all of those things, that, of course, meant that I am able to contribute more, you know, more value in my community for the people that matter to me. Um, so... Kate, I know I put in the newsletter uh, that sent out to people. I talked a little bit about your work. I said what you do, but just to sort of introduce you properly. You now we have the Kate Wolf. Well, you are highly you work with highly sensitive entrepreneurs, and I know that you are highly sensitive yourself, and that's part of the whole you know through the journey going. Why is this so hard? Yeah, working it out and making it work and making it into a superpower, and helping them to communicate their deepest gifts into the world, purposefully. And I think really importantly, profitably yeah. as well, because we need to nurture our bodies, our likes, don't yeah. we as well? We can't exist on air alone. We can't exist with just the art then. We need the like as well. And so, yeah, we're going to be, you know, obviously I've just said a lot, so it'd be great. Any responses that you have from what I've just said, um, you're going to be sharing um, a workshop that you've been doing, which I went to on Monday, but you're doing it again tomorrow, which is fantastic. Yeah. And about your Share the Magic Inside program that's coming up. So welcome. welcome. Oh, thank you, Maggie. It, gosh, so interesting just to, yeah, get to sit back and hear you talk about the places where my work meets yours mm. and, and meets you and, and has met you over the years. And, and that all of those meetings and, and deepenings of things you're already, you already had a, a path to right but the, it sounds like this helped make those pathways s stronger yeah. yeah and and clearer and, and more rooted in your body and your essence right this clearer sense of your essence that meant you were then able to contribute more value to to those you care about that is just like the best thing that i could ever hear because that is why i do it all to to be able to um, see people like you, like really magical beings. Um, and you know, we can talk about this, but with the host of kind of confusion and self-doubt that being different in this in this world as it currently is creates, seeing people like you, deeply magical people, get to claim your gift and then go out and be giving them, right? Be giving them in a bigger way, creating bigger ripples because that's how we do it. That's how together, each of us playing our part, we change the world. And I think it's important, isn't it? That together again is something that so you taught me so much. You know, we each have our peace. Absolutely, yeah, a piece of the puzzle. And we need each other. I think that's one of the, the, the greatest kind of cosmic jokes, you know, is that is how much we need each other, right? And that we forget sometimes and we think we can do it by ourselves or we think that pieces that we're not so good at 
we need to you know make sure we get good at or we need to or, or it's like um a flaw right and we're, we're mean to ourselves about it whereas actually that is an invitation to community mm. yeah. Yeah. yeah like right now for example i can't use my left hand i i've never had rsi in my life before it's flared up in the last three days i can't use my left hand and so i'm having to ask for more help than ever before i mean it is astounding how much i didn't notice how much i used my hands <laughs> right like i can't wash up at the moment because you can't wash up one-handed i can't carry trays you know all these things that that i can't do and so it's just this this further reminder of of the body right of the like yeah yeah really really interesting that you should bring that bring that up because we're working with um we're working with the god Tia at the moment who is a one-handed god he sacrificed, no. his, his, <laughs> he sacrificed his, his sword arm for the for the greater good he, um, wow. he knew he was going to do it and uh, you know the, the people know know the story so we've got the big wolf benris who was like Tia's best mate yeah and this wolf gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it's got to the point where he's going to like devour the world and Tia recognises that something's got to be done about it. And he basically says, um, if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be me. Mm. Because I am the wolf's friend and I can't stand in integrity if I let somebody else find him. So he does it and he knows that um, the Fenris wolf says, no, if you do this, I'm going to bite off your arm. Mm. And he does it anyway. You know, he does it anyway because um, his, his integrity is more important to him than being, you know, perfect being a perfect warrior, doing something, he has to do what he needs to do in the moment. Yeah. So that's funny that, you know, obviously I feel very bad for you that you have RSI in your, in your arm, but it's very interesting that that, it's that reflection to us. Fascinating. It's fa And especially now, extra level, hearing that story, because what I've been feeling into is, you know, why? Like, that's what that's what we do, right? When we're, when we're highly sensitive, we're like, oh, why is this happening? What is, you know, and other people would just kind of get on with life. Um, and, you know, I, I had someone, it's a new friend, we sort of started out dating and then it just turned into friendship. So he doesn't know me well enough yet to know that unsolicited advice is my least favorite thing. <laughs> so when I told him about the RSI, he said, sounds like um, the universe is encouraging you to rest more. And I was like, mm -mm, that is not it. Like, I'm really good at rest. I'm not a pusher through. That isn't the message. Um, that's a projection, like that's an assumptive. Like it could be, right? Um, for someone else, you know, that that was the message. For me, when I tuned in, the message was about presence. Mm. It was about presence because the um, literal and practical effect of not being able to use my left hand means I can't type. Right? And um, because I couldn't type, I couldn't type up the copy for my slides. And for this webinar, right, for this class that I, that I held yesterday and Monday, and I'm going to do again on Thursday, claiming the gifts in your sensitivity. And being sensitive and being someone who you know, practices self-awareness like religiously, I, I asked, like, wh what is this about? Like, why in this moment can I not use my left hand when this has never happened before in my whole entire life? And the message I got was, let go of the slides, let go of the perfection, right, of the beautiful slides. And this, not in a massive way, but this kind of mm. slight reliance on the beauty of the slides and just show up and just and be even more present in the moment, which is the exact words you just used from that story. Mm. And what happened as a result of that, um, and there's an opportunity to come to this class, like Maggie said, tomorrow. Um, what happened as a, as a result of that was the second class, we actually ended up staying on for two hours. <laughs> And because I didn't have the slides up, I could see people. 
I could see the reactions. I could see the facial expression responses, which mm. meant I could play and call people in and shift tack and just be so much more present. So at a while I'm like, okay, I got the message. Now can it go away, please? <laughs> I am, um, I'm actually really grateful because mm. what a, what a gift to it be reminded of that. And it's so true, and I know that it's something that will resonate with people. And, um, you know, I get that people will say that sort of middle earth readings when we do on a Monday, and they'll say, yeah, I've got the message now. Moving <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, come on now. <laughs> yeah. Surely that was the point, and now I've got it. This should go away, and it's really annoying when it doesn't. <laughs> think, oh, I'm just going to fully and profoundly embody this message right now. And, um, and yeah, it's, you've just revealed another layer to me when I think about tear and um, that idea that... that uh, if the universe asks you the question you know what are you and what value can you provide without the slides you know what are you and what value could you provide without your sword you know and that's that's a theme for Tyr he was a king and he gives up the throne and then he he and he was a hermaphrodite and he becomes just male and it's like what are you when the world might see you as diminishing might see you as sort of stepping back and not being that um what success what this what it's supposed to look like yes you know? exactly. and, I, and I do believe that that is one of the gifts that like being um in in, in your sort of highly sensitive you know empathic you know all of these different offers us the opportunity to break the mold that yeah. other people are so firmly centered in yeah you know, they're they're comfortable there they're fine there and we're going oh God, I'm finding this really uncomfortable yes exactly yeah, one of the um, a great, great teacher, Alexandra Pope, who is now founder, co-founder of the Red School, she talks about highly sensitive people being the canaries um, down in the mines, you know, that the miners used to take mm -hmm. with them. Because if the levels of oxygen got too low or the carbon dioxide got too high, the canaries would die, right? And so they, the miners knew they had to get out. And she talks about the highly sensitive people in the world being the canaries in the mind, because we're the ones going, uh, guys, we can't live the way we're living. Yeah. And if you look at the statistics between high sensitivity and chronic illness, or those sort of, this, you know, they're like the mysterious illnesses that the mainstream, um, m mainstream medicine doesn't understand, right? Like fibromyalgia, endometriosis, all, all sorts of generally quite feminine and feminine body related illnesses um, are, are not yet fully understood. The, the statistical link between being highly sensitive and having one of those mysterious or chronic illnesses is like overwhelmingly and unignorably high. Mm. And it is like, it's an alarm system that the world needs to be paying attention to. And this is one of the, if we can call it, um, silver linings mm. of, of COVID and long COVID is finally people are paying more attention to these ongoing chronic illnesses and a lot of research is now happening um, around long COVID, but it's all linked and all related to, to these chronic illnesses. Mm. So yes, ex exactly that. Like we're the people kind of pointing at stuff and going, uh this isn't comfortable right actually this is this is painful this is not sustainable like if we if we transfer that across to the world of business even just the um energy of some of the business classes that i've been to i've kind of gone in and gone oh n n no thank you like the the overwhelm on my nervous system mm the kind of um, fake up, fake upping, you know, that a lot of people do. It's almost like I imagine them in a motorboat going vroom, vroom, <laughs> with their nervous system and their adrenals. Yes. And they're like, I'm only going to do it a little bit because I, I even find it stressful to pretend about like, hello, you know, and it's like, so, so <laughs> and so what I, um, what I love is that paying attention to our, our nervous systems 
as highly sensitive beings, mm. honoring them instead of going into those spaces and just thinking, oh, well, you know, I've just got to get through this because I need the information, right? Um, means that people are looking for new ways. New ways of being, new ways of doing business, new ways of mm. being successful and what that actually can mean in our world. You've probably seen that meme that sort of did the rounds that was like, we don't need more successful people, we need more poets and writers and and I'm like, can't we have both? <laughs> like, can't we have both? wasn't allowed to be successful. Exactly. <laughs> I want successful poets and successful artists and successful healers. That's what I want a world full of. Yeah. No, I can I can really feel that. And when you you were talking about the the canary analogy, which I think is such a good, you know, such a good analogy. The only way that the canary gets to survive is if it sinks, you know? Don't go any further. Otherwise I'm going to cop it and then you're going to cop it. I might go first, but you're going to go too. Um, And that's why it's so important. Now, even, I think, even if, even for those of us who aren't thinking, I want to bring, um, I, w- I want to have a successful business, for example, being able to, artic- to bring a message and yeah. say, actually, you know, I have got something that I need to say. Yeah. It might be powerfully through my business, you know, in making a, a, a difference, or it might be that I need that message in order to get people to you know, make a change or yeah. you know, do whatever it is that you do. Or it might just be in your family, in your home, in your community that that voice is needed. So, um, mm. and again, that's why your work is so important because you teach canaries to sing. I teach canaries to sing. I love that, Maggie. I've never thought of it like quite like that before, but yeah, I do. And um, and and yes, like business can be the vehicle. And I think if you if you have chosen business as your vehicle of self expression, there's that extra level of of necessity of sharing your voice. Right, you cannot grow your business without sharing your voice. Mm. So that's one. Um, again kind of cosmic joke or kick up the earth it's like haha we're gonna get you sharing your voice because you have to to be bringing in um, the right eyes and then the right uh, potential clients and then the right clients but also yeah for people and I only work with business owners who who have a message so you know I could take my ability to um, take a, a like an idea that sort of seems a bit amorphous, a bit vast, mm. a bit uh, intangible or, or complex, right? And ground it into words that express the value of that idea and make sense to the right client. And I could apply that anywhere if I chose to. But what excites me and what... Um, activates that gift to to even greater power is when I put it in the right place yes and the right place is with people like you people who are creative artistic um, see things that other people don't see like uh, (laughs) uh, we're about we're going we're heading in the wrong direction guys we need to take an about turn and, and that's when my gift gets activated to, to even greater power, which I think is such an interesting way to look at it. Like, where does your, where do your gifts get activated? Like, where can they, not only where can they do the greatest good, but energetically, where do you find that experience of, oh, like, wow, my, my gift just came online in, in a, even more intense powerful and fast way like it just comes through you know those doubt those instant downloads yeah and they do it's you know it's the the power of the just like one session with with you to make me go oh you know and it doesn't feel supercharged you know it's not like the go go it's not <laughs> it just feels like oh i've opened more and the flow is coming through more strongly whereas before it was like a you know water behind me and I'm just this little stream going wow it's like I'm open more and it comes through more fully is the way that I feel about it and I do want to ask you about share the magic inside because it's yeah. 
such a good program it's wonderful but I just wanted to check in because I know that um there is that you are doing the the webinar for you know high sensitivity and finding the gift within high sensitivity yeah so I just wanted to check because we've talked about it a little bit you know is there anything that um that we haven't covered that you would like to sort of share mm. with, with this group around um yeah what it means to be highly sensitive or you know what you've what you found from the the groups that you've worked with already this week yeah so what's coming now what I'm feeling into is the necessity of doing it in a community who gets it Mm. you know because that is when if you are highly sensitive you're in a group that is 20 percent of the population right so you are in a minority and the rest of the world can be um, invalidating of your sensitivity and the needs that come along with it, like the, the extra need for alone time, you know, for processing time, for downtime, for rest, for sleep, also for creative outlet. And because those invalidations happened in response um, you know, to, to other people, the healing also needs to happen with other people. Like I, I do believe that, that there's only so far we can go kind of alone with our journals, right? Or even, you know, us and a therapist or us and a really, really good coach. There's something that happens when we get in a group of other people going, I feel that too and I've always felt a bit different too and I found I find the majority of the world kind of too too loud or too um, almost like opaque you know sometimes um, and um, and being able to you know sit in circle as I know as I know you do Maggie with other people sharing experiences that you get to like read yourself into. And that's the power of story, right, as well, is um, a good story. Someone telling their own story means you get to feel, I think this is your term actually, did you say, like your, your corresponding story or your responding? Responding story, yeah, yeah. it rises up inside you. Yeah, I remember you sharing that after story school, like, ah, oh, these responding stories that rise up. And it's why, I'm going off on a little bit of a t story tangent here, but um, it's why it's one of my absolute pet peeves when a, a teacher or a trainer will um, share a story and then say, and so the moral of the story is, <laughs> and I'm like, ah, you just ruined it. <laughs> Don't tell me what the lesson is. Tell the story better so that the story delivers the lesson or the realization or the or the responding and healing it's so true story. and it, it, we do that um in i do a story session for each of our themes so and we've got ours coming up on friday i think actually our story session and the bit that i love is that i do this you know i share the story and then I get to say, what, what does that mean for you? And the people yeah. who are there tell me, because I want to know what they think, you know, not, yeah. and, it, and it's, it is, it's the responding stories that rise up in the group. That, that's where the magic lies, mm. I think. So, uh, so thank you. That was a really beautiful um, reflection. I just had a little check in the Facebook group. I've seen people watching, but we don't have any questions coming up, but I just wanted okay. to talk with Diane and, and Lisa before we move on to looking at um, share the magic inside, yeah. do you have anything that you would like to share or any responses to what Kate and I have been talking about? Diane. Um, there's a lot to think about. It seems like a small concept at first, but then sitting and listening, I can relate to all of it. I just don't know how to move forward with it. Um, ah. That's why Kate's doing a fabulous webinar, <laughs> which I would highly recommend. Yeah. Um, is it right, Kate, that if you, even if you can't <laughs> at the time, if you register for the webinar, 
you still get to have the recording absolutely yeah, yeah. if you register we'll send you the recording right. so i'll put the sign up diane because it is i think you know it is a, a topic that is worthy of a longer discussion than we're having yeah. now and, and Kate it more. has yeah and that it's made me think deeper about my own illness because things that you said when we've had group meetings about letting go of things um obviously I'm holding on to something that's not doing me a lot of good at the moment <laughs> and I feel like with you and with Kate the answers are there but you're not just going to hand them to me on a plate and it's something through the way you teach that will make me search in the right way does that make sense <laughs> it makes perfect sense yeah. Diane and Okay. And thank you for that because I do think that that's not, well, I'll speak for myself, and, but um, to hold the space for somebody else for them to find their own answers is, yes. I think, so important. You know, that there, is, there are general truths out there in the world, but for the majority of us, it's, it's what's your truth, you know, and your journey is important. So to be able to hold that for you is very powerful. I really, really love the way you um, express that, that, um, you know, the way of teaching can help you use that for your own right answers and um you know that yeah that was that that example i shared of this person saying oh sounds like the universe is telling you this i'm like no <laughs> it's not <laughs> and um i see that being done a lot like this people telling other people what their messages mm. and the only person that knows is, is you can i say i hate that <laughs> i understand it <laughs> but i hate it i want someone to say do this and things will be okay <laughs> yeah i get oh, that yeah yeah it is true but it's yeah. also true that i think that we've existed in that in that paradigm of you know a small number of people getting to make all the decisions yeah. and then conditioning everybody else to believe that it's the truth for yeah. so yeah. long that I do think you know for for better or for worse we're in a time now when we're being told you know going back to the canaries you know those people are leading us into the mine well you know <laughs> I found my voice <laughs> yes you did find your voice and it was very fabulous when you when you did um at our um um, through awakening wasn't it when you were just like I never I don't sing and you, and you found it it was so powerful so keep going with that Diane thank you I think also it's about um like subtlety and discernment so knowing that sometimes there will be people that have answers that you need right there will simply be people who have had more experience or done more training in a certain field and do no more and i think that can then get ignored as well if with people if people are like adamantly um i have all the answers right sometimes that's what's stopping you and it is about um opening up to to other avenues of, of support and then knowing that you are the the filter mm -hmm. of of the truth so that's when we bring in our discernment of like oh yeah there's something for me here like oh no that person thinks that but that's actually completely untrue and i'm not even going to give it a, like a, an ounce of energy yeah because if we you know, again if we if we transfer this across to business there are business principles which make things work, right? There simply are. And, um, and that's not enough because if it was, we'd be seeing a lot more successful entrepreneurs and far less stressed out entrepreneurs with, um, you know, with a plan, right? Like, oh, this is, this is my strategy, this is my plan oh it's not working and on the other side only following your intuition in business mm. is not enough because we unfortunately have a lot of impoverished intuitives so it's not enough 
in the field of business. What we need is, is both and in the right dosage and in the right places. So we need opportunities for, for diving in. Like Maggie said, one of my ways of working is to create roots into you, to your body, your truth. And then I teach the very practical, like this is what you now need to do, right? This is where you need to now take that force, that truth, that wild voice, and let it be seen by the right people. And here are some things you can say to make it more likely that you will bring in to your work the right people. And here are some things not to say, right? There are, there are times in my teaching where I am didactic, but it's like maybe this much, I think. What do, you, what do you think, Matt? I'd be really interested to hear. Yeah, no, no, I think you're absolutely right. It's a really important distinction to make. I think sometimes our intuition is yelling, trust that person. You know, you don't have the answers, but trust that yeah. person. That's what, I, that's what I felt when I, you know, when I knew yeah. I was going to work with you. I was just like, I, I know that I trust Kate. You know, and that was the first step for me and why I knew that I needed to work with you. And yeah, no, your, your teaching, I would agree. I think that most of the time it is very... Uh, expansive and <sighs> helping me to feel into my own truth but it's also you know I look on you and I see you as the type of successful business owner that I want to be and I want to know how you've done that and you generously share that and you share all of the things that this is what somebody who maybe isn't highly sensitive will do in their business these are all the reasons why I don't do that mm. And when you say that, I go, well, that makes perfect sense. And that's absolutely true. Why would I not do that? Why would I go and um, um, why wouldn't I follow the path that you've already trodden when I know that it works for you and I know that we resonate so strongly? So I think that, you know, I think yeah. for me, that's where it comes in. that You, you share from a place of um, genuine, I've done this, I've tried this, it works. And there are teachers and trainers out there who just, you know, they have the material, but they're not actually applying it themselves. And that's yeah, different. Yeah. You can feel it. So yeah. that's where your authority comes from. It's because it's your experience. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's really great to, yeah, hear reflected back. I always find that fascinating, right? To, to know, like, how, how do your teachings land? Because you can't see yourself teaching or feel it. No. You have to wait, don't you? You have yeah. to. No, it just reminds me when um, I started doing this work and um, Odin is my coach and every now and then he's, I'm like, I don't think I can do that. And he's like, well, you have to do it. And I'm like, oh, you're right, because I can't teach other people how to do it unless I've done it myself. So I'm going in. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's very true. And I know that that's um, the way that you run your business. You know, you would never teach anything that didn't, wasn't something that sat in total integrity with you. No. So I would just highly recommend for everyone, if, if any of that resonates around being highly sensitive and feeling like, yeah, you know, either I want to understand more what that means and how to operate from that modality, or you think actually I do have something to, to share, then I would definitely recommend the webinar on Thursday, but I would also recognize Share the Magic Inside, mm. which um, if I remember rightly for me, I did story school with you and then I did Share the Magic Inside. And yeah. I know that yeah, you're, there's a very nice package that you're putting together, which I won't discuss because then no, you, you, you'll discuss that um, whatever you want to there. But oh, it's such a good, such a good program. And, you know, Kate has curated it and loved it and nurtured it into being mm. so that it then does the same for you. So mm. please do tell us a bit more about it, Kate, because um, yeah, I'm so excited for everybody who gets to do it because I'm like, I want to do it again. Do it again. Come <laughs> do it again. Yeah, it's, um, you know, and it does work wherever you're at on your business journey because I, I have been self-employed my whole life. Like I knew very early on that I did not want someone else telling me what to do. So I've pretty much been self-employed sort of, you know, out the gates. And I spent a decade um, immersed in both the world of theatre, so writing, performing, directing, acting, and also the world of, of spirituality and energy and healing 
working as a, a yoga teacher and an energy, intuitive energy healer. And, and then, um, <laughs> that was too much, <laughs> probably unsurprisingly, right? It was probably added up to about well, there were five sort of specific roles, but probably about 50, because as you know, when you're self-employed, each each job has like 10 different hats. Yeah. Um, and I, I very neared burnout. And I quite dramatically left everything. Uh, I left London. I left all the in-person work and I moved to this like just wonderfully witchy little cottage right on the middle of the moors in Dartmoor. It was a 45 minute walk from the nearest village. I, I did not have a car. I didn't even have a bicycle. You know, I would walk to the village once a week, buy my food. If I timed it right, I'd get a lift home with a butcher. <laughs> Otherwise I would just walk home. And we spent a lot, and I think, um, it is a valid point to mention that I was, I ended up being there for nine months. Mm. Right? Nine. Nine, nine months of, of gestation. Mm. And then came back, back to London and, and stepped into, and this is now almost eight years ago, back to London and stepped onto the path of I am no longer going to scatter my gifts. I am going to, this is really hard to do with just one hand. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to bring them together into the cauldron and stir them up and offer that. Mm. And it took time because I had a lot of fear to work through. I had a lot of self-doubt to work through. But that was a massive, massive changing point. And what Share the Magic is, is the culmination of, of those years of experience, of beginning to, instead of scatter my gifts, bring them together, collate them. And I think what happens is a lot of people, when they're looking for like their thing, they think it's one thing. And that's very stressful. Whereas, when you gather your gifts and you look at what you then have in that cauldron, that's unique, right? Because other people might do what you do. They might, um, you know, also be an artist or also make jewelry or also um, kind of infuse their art with healing or also um, be an intuitive energy healer or a psychic or a tarot card reader or, or whatever. But it's unlikely that there'll be someone else out there who has the combination of the experience, like the life experience, kind of foundational formative life experiences that you've had that um, absolutely make unique, you unique, and the certifications and the trainings and the years of work. And it is completely unlikely all the way to impossible that there'd be anyone else out there who does what you do with the unique experiences that you've had along the way and does it in the way that you do. Mm. So that's how you get to unique. And that's what the whole of the beginning of the Share the Magic Inside journey is about, is like really um, excavating your life right, for, for the resources that you now have. Um, you know, I see this false, uh, I'm starting again story happen a lot in the world of entrepreneurialism. Like, oh, I you know, I, I don't know what to do because I'm starting again. You're never, ever, ever starting again. You're always taking what has got you to where you've got and then walking forwards with that, right? And it's about bringing that into your branding, bringing that into your bio, bringing that into how you position yourself as unique. 
So yeah, the journey of, of Share the Magic Inside the Course takes you through that process of, of excavating your life, what makes you unique, and then shaping it into something you can offer to the world. Something that's really clear, really tangible, really easily graspable by the right people. And then how to share it, so how to market and how to sell, but in a way that feels really good to you and, and in integrity and not overwhelming or overstimulating for, for your nervous system. Um, and in a way that harnesses and utilizes your gifts, right? Your empathy, your ability to connect, your ability to tune in, feel in, like maybe you have this ability to just go to the very core of what's happening with someone. Or maybe on a sales call, you have that ability to just naturally and effortlessly help someone open up and feel safe enough to share with you about themselves, about what they're going through, right? Which is, and that level of trust and rapport is vital to then have the person you're talking to feel safe enough to step in, to work with you and, and know that you can hold space for them going forwards. And I, I feel quite, quite, um, sad about some of the sort of mistaken meanings I see really intuitive people make about what sales means and then not do it right because of these judgments of what sales means and yeah we've had some really you know crappy examples of what sales can mean but really sales is about meeting someone where they're at like being a space for them to share their challenges, right? To, to be truthful with you, because no one doesn't have any challenges, right? So just to meet, meet them where they are, be a safe space for them, help them tune into what it is they really want. So again, it's about truth. Mm -hmm. Sales is about truth, right? And, um, and then if you know you have something that can help them have less of what they don't want and more of what they do want then inviting them into it and and trusting them as an individual right that they will say yes or no that that means zero to do with you if they say no you haven't been rejected as a human being it's just a no it doesn't mean anything about who you are or your self-worth um and and then strengthening the muscle to do that again and again and again until you have a steady flow of clients and you get to do your work right you get to do your work so yeah so share the magic takes you through those four steps of um i haven't mentioned one so finding your magic shaping your magic sharing your magic and then this vital step that actually happens between each of them which is owning it mm. that embodied energetic ownership after finding your magic and then after shaping it and then after sharing it so that you become more and more um, self-trusting and less and less reliant on the opinions good or bad of other people yeah. oh thank you kate it was well no as you're going through the stages, obviously in my mind, I'm going through this sort of whirlwind of stuff that I experienced through each of those stages. And, I was yeah. like, <laughs> and all of these, you know, it's always lovely to look back on something and go, oh, wow, how different that, that is. And um, particularly, I think that you're, you're right, that we can get to the point where we're like, oh, no, I can't, it's, it's commodification. Yeah. And I'm, I'm selling out by selling in. I'm selling out, and uh, and it can feel really uncomfortable. And going through those stages, there was a point where I was like, oh, you know, it's first step forward. It's not about me. It's about the person I'm serving, you know, and yeah. them investing in themselves and the transformation that they're going to have. And every time I make it about me, I'm going, you no, know, yeah. make it about them. And then that next year, just step where you go, oh my god, it totally is about me, as well. You know, but looking at it from a different um, different perspective, and I I know that some some people might remember because this is a while ago now. But one of the first pieces I did with you was my biography, and I put it up in uh, the Magan Rose website. 
really quietly, you know, I found my voice. I'm going to whisper it. <laughs> Not tell anyone. I put it in there and I was like, well, it's up there now. I've, I've done the homework. <laughs> Kate provided. And there was somebody, I want to say it was Marie, but Marie, I'm sorry if it wasn't you and I'm sorry to the person who it was. Obviously, for whatever reason, literally about two hours later, went, came and posted in the group and they went, wow, I've just read Maggie's biography. It's amazing. Everyone has to go read it right now. And, <laughs> do it. and everyone started reading. Like, wow, that's amazing. And to this day, I get more people coming to me saying, I just need to work with you because of what I've written in my biography than I do about what I say. And this is the content of my program. No, yeah. because because I chose to show up and I chose to put that out there and feel a bit vulnerable about it and make it about my people and also make it about me at the same time. So. I love that story so much and I've heard it before, but I will never tire of hearing it because that is the magic, right? When you let yourself be vulnerable and you find that beautiful balance between it being about your people and it being about you because your work needs to bring you joy right? And needs to be infused with your essence or your Valkyrie. Did I get that right? You did. Very impressive. But Excellent. I suppose Valkyria for Ooh. when it's you, Valkyrie for when it's a winged woman watching over you. <laughs> Do you know what is kind of cool? I played a role in um, ITV's um, Jekyll and Hyde with Tom yeah. Bateman. And guess what role I played? Not a Valkyrie. No! Mm -hmm. Everybody, real life Valkyrie <laughs> in our space. <laughs> that, that's amazing. Yeah. I love that. I have to see if I can hey, find well, some photos. Valkyrie. Back in the day. Yeah, it was so fun. Oh my goodness. In makeup, it was like you had to wear this insane lycra layer, and then just there were feathers everywhere everywhere and over the head so you ended up being sort of this yeah winged feathery rushy valkyrie i just i don't know just, i'm actually speechless and as most people know i don't get speechless very often <laughs> actually speechless that's so amazing what a perfect uh, place mm -hmm. for us to start to to wrap yeah. up um yeah. and diane i can see that you put in the in the chat that that's exactly what you were you said to yourself which i think was in relation to when kate was talking about like you have to find the one gift and what do you do when you've got all of the all, all yeah. the gifts together yes it was yeah yeah that's where i'm at do it. well all i can tell you is this woman knows how to do it <laughs> so, no she has she has the answers sometimes yeah. there is somebody who has the answers yeah so, and often my answers are processes that I've developed over the years, again, as a result of going to too many workshops where they promised to help me find my purpose and I would arrive and they'd give me a little formula. And oh, yeah. It, yeah, oh, yeah, you know those, you know those times. And I'd be like, oh, my goodness, I know how to craft sentences, right? Mm -hmm. that, is not, <laughs> that is not my challenge. <laughs> I don't know what to put in the gaps. Yeah. Because I don't want to just write a sentence. I want it to be true and I want it to be full of my essence. And I want it to speak to the right people. So as a result of the years of frustration of um, going to those kinds of workshops and, and feeling very annoyed at what I found, I developed creative processes. Like I went back mm -hmm. to my experience in the theatre where I used to hold workshops all the time to create something a beautiful powerful play that moved the audience from nothing mm -hmm. right except it was never from nothing it was always from the unique collation of the um the devising team all right, right. and what was inside of them so games um yeah, essentially gate, like lots of different types of, of games, ways in um, creative processes that reveal, yeah. reveal truths. Yeah, which is that, you know, I just, I think that um, if you haven't had a kind of creative background, I've got a client in one minute. 
(laughs) (laughs) you haven't had a creative background and all you've had is a business background um no i'm the other way that's just a foreign yeah no i mean for for the people running those work the the formula workshops yeah um and then so if you're your way right which is what most of my clients are then it's just bringing some of just enough of that business acumen to your beautiful creativity okay (laughs) ah Thank you so much, Kate. I was just doing my another little check there. And every time I do it, you can hear that the video turns on and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I couldn't hear it, actually. Well, that's good. I'm glad that I managed to mute myself when I was checking. But uh, we've been through the, the comments and that's all fine. So we don't have to have any others. Um, but if there's any, if anybody's watching the recording, uh, yeah, yeah. please do continue to post. You know, I can pass those comments on to Kate as well and get any questions answered. And I will put the links to the um, webinar and to share the magic inside into the group as well. It's been such a pleasure having you, Kate. Um, it was well worth that. wrestling with Zoom. Yay, and you did it, <laughs> and now you know how to do it, and now you know you can do it. Now I know I can, so there you go. Kate has once again uh-huh. helped me to grow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. I'm gonna stop the um, the live stream, and Kate, I know that you need to leave, and I'll just um, hang about to say hello to the people who are yeah. who are here live. Brilliant. But um, thank you. I will pop off. Yes, so gorgeous to be with you all today, and thank you, Maggie, for being such a grace, gracious hostess. Yes. And yeah, I look forward to seeing <coughs> you, some of you either joining me on the webinar tomorrow or inside share the magic inside i didn't even mention the surprise bonus maybe you can tell them about that maggie is that the story school yeah i will do yeah. okay i will do that while kate goes so bye bye kate so bye everyone bye thank you maggie my absolute pleasure kate this is why i was <coughs> jealous when um i saw the the offer because i, I did um story school with Kate mm. which is the where I think that's actually where I crafted my biography if I remember rightly and it's uh, you know it's such a beautiful book and it's all about you know connecting into your power to tell beautiful fabulous authentic story and then I did um show the magic inside afterwards which was wonderful and fabulous and the people who are doing it this time around they get story school as well <laughs> part of the package and I was like oh but it's a wonderful package it really really is um you know Kate's worked so hard on putting this together and the other thing actually which you get which um again I was like oh I want that is a beautiful lady who called Tanya Forgin who is a rest expert is right. leading three like rest sessions through oh. the course of Share the Magic right. Inside and I've worked with Tanya before and I was like no <laughs> I want that too so they've crafted, you know, it's, it's a really fantastic offer this time round for 2022. Just really aware that that extra, that extra is really needed at this time for all of us as we try and reacclimatize to, you know, what's happening in the world and, and say, actually, what we are needed mm. even more, even though we are knackered even more. <laughs> like, How so we, so we need more support to do that. So, um, so yeah, I shall finish on that note. Bye-bye to everybody on the recording. There we go.